Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, so I have the data finally to answer a question that I've wondered for a really long time. And it's a fairly simple thing that you could figure out yourself for your own house. Uh, but the question is, how many million BTUs does it take to heat a house for an entire year? Uh, it's something that, I don't know, it's kind of nice to have a general grasp of how much heat it takes to heat a particular house. Now, uh, no matter what type of fuel you're using, the number of BTUs should stay very similar. It won't be exactly the same because different types of fuels have different efficiencies. So if you're using a natural gas furnace that's 95% efficient, you will use less BTUs than if you're using an 80% efficient, uh, let's say home heating oil type application, or if you're burning wood or something like that. Uh, so the BTUs will vary a little bit, but generally speaking, the number of BTUs it takes to heat a house for a year is going to be pretty similar. Uh, so we live in Minnesota, so depending on the climate that you live in, it's going to change some. Uh, but I've just filled my propane tanks, and uh, my propane tanks are big enough where I only have to fill uh, one time in an entire year. So I have a really good... Um, for sure, solid number of how many gallons of propane it took to heat my house for the entire year. Uh, so that total comes to 536 gallons of propane, and that includes my gas range, which is pretty negligible. The amount of fuel that you actually use to cook food is not that much, and during the winter, that, that uh, heat went into the house anyway. Uh, so again, fairly small house, 1,500 square feet, 536 gallons. Now we have 91,333 BTUs per gallon of propane. So we can take our 536 gallons and multiply it by that number of BTUs per gallon. And so 536 times 91,333 equals 51.457 million BTUs. So 50 million BTUs, that's what it took to heat my house for a year. And our climate is fairly cold. So if you're a little bit further south in Minnesota or you live in a slightly warmer client, client climate, uh, you are going to use less. And if it's colder, you're going to use more. Or if you have a bigger house or a smaller house, uh, that's going to change it a lot too. Obviously, insulation levels, all those sorts of things. Uh, but this is something that's kind of neat to do. And if you have the time to do the calculation on whatever type of fuel you're using, if you have records for uh, how much you paid for your gas bills and those sorts of things and dividing that out and figuring out not just how much it costs you, but how many million BTUs you're using. It's kind of an interesting metric to understand about your house. And it's something that I've always wondered, you know, you talk about the number of BTUs a furnace is. Oh, it's a 100,000 BTU furnace. Well, what does that really mean anyway? Well, it's 100,000 BTU H. So let's break down one other thing just for fun here. Uh, we've got in my house, a 95% efficient 70,000 BTU furnace. So uh, we theoretically could take 5% off of that number of BTUs that it took, and that would be the actual heat it took. So 51.457 million BTUs minus 5% would be the actual number of BTUs it took to heat the house, but still we had to use that many BTUs in order to heat the house because 5% of the heat is waste out through the exhaust. But anyway, we can do a little bit of uh, calculations using this. So at 95%, 70,000 BTU input furnace, we can take our total number of BTUs and divide that by our BTU H. So that's BTUs per hour. So per hour that my furnace runs, <clears throat> it uses 70,000 BTUs or should use very close to that. So 70,000 BTUs, this divided by this equals 735.1 hours. So that's how many hours my furnace ran in an entire year to heat the house. It's not perfect because of the gas range, but it should be really close. So we can continue with that. Just real simple math, 735 hours divided by five months. We have approximately five heating months starting in, I think it's November, December, January, February, March. Those are our primary heating months. And that equals 147 hours per month that our uh, furnace was running. Divided by our 30 days equals about 4.9 hours per day. 
So obviously during the really cold months, the furnace is going to run longer and the warmer months is going to run a little bit shorter. So, but yeah, this data is really cool, kind of interesting stuff. So uh, the price of propane right now is very reasonable. So at $1.23 per gallon, uh, we multiply that out. That comes to my total that I started with from my propane bill, which is around $660 to heat our little house for an entire year. So there you go. Some really fun math for you. Uh, I don't know. It's just really fun crunching those numbers once in a while. I imagine it's not for everyone, but for me it is. <laughs> now, just in case you have a different type of fuel, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. This uh, paper I'm going to talk more about in an upcoming video about different fuel types, but uh, most people leave by the end of the video anyway. But if you're going to do this, you can take the different types of fuels here and over here we have the BTUs per unit. So natural gas per 1,000 cubic feet is a little over a million BTUs. And then going down the list there, you can see propane, electric, um, electric with geothermal, and so on and so forth. So um, this electric with geothermal one is a little bit interesting. Okay, you're getting um, the amount of heat that you get out per unit is going to be the same. So you get out um, 3,412 BTUs per uh, kilowatt hour of electricity, but you actually get more BTUs back if it's an actual heat pump or a geothermal heat pump because you're going to be getting 300%, 250 to 300% um, of whatever you're putting in back, so you're going to get more than that out, but uh, so that's a little bit more complicated to calculate. Uh, and then there's fuel oil and wood and the BTU per unit of wood, you got to look that up because different types of wood have different number of BTUs uh, per cord. So you have to do some research on that. And then there's coal as well. So just some little bits of information that might be helpful for you if you are going to try to calculate this. So yeah, super exciting. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you out, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and yeah, look forward to a video coming soon just comparing all those different heating uh, fuel types and uh, understanding the differences in costs for those. So stay tuned, and uh, yeah, hit that bell icon if you want to be notified about when future videos go live. So also hit a thumbs up but hit the thumbs up button if you think uh, Ruben should clean the shop. I should probably clean it too. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. See ya.